check for an eyewitness account. Like, did people see it? What did they say about it? You know that kind of thing. Give us just now the Bible. Hi, what's up, amazing people, and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hi. My name is Kadibel, and my friends call me Kadibi. I'm the king's daughter. <laughs> In this channel, I create content on testimonies and stories, news, interviews, and books review. And today is an interesting story that I want us to get into it. Uh, there's a lot I want to share. There's a lot I just want to share. But before I start, let me ask you this question. Do you believe in the Bible? I know the last time I spoke about quiet time and using the right Bible. But do you believe in the Bible? I want to talk to you about the Bible. So, when we come back from the short break, we'll start. Now I got help from my pastor, my Reverend, my Reverend Kweku Ewusi Mensa. God bless you so much for helping me prepare this amazing notes and to tell my viewers, my subscribers why we should trust in the Bible. Let me say something. Everything that happened in the Bible can be trusted. Like everything. The Bible is so true, like, because there are facts, there are evidence that support it. I'm telling you, the Bible is so true, I don't know how else to say it. So I'm going to give you six reasons why you should trust the Bible with the help of my notes. And the first reason is, the Bible is accurate. The Bible is accurate, it's perfect, it's historically true. How? Whatever happened in the Bible was true. These were real people, real situations, real places. There is not even one lie in the Bible because if there is one lie in the Bible, then it ceases to be a Bible. So there is not even one lie in the Bible and everything that happened is true. How do you check? Number one, when something is true, check for an eyewitness account. Like, did people see it? What did they say about it? You know that kind of thing. Give us just. Now, the Bible, we have people telling us what they saw and what did not happen and what happened and all that. And also, if somebody is giving you something and says trust it, check for the generational, you know, um, accounts. Like, how did it pass through generations to generations? This Bible has been there for a long time, right? For years. My great-grandmother used the Bible. What? Can you imagine? And I'm still using the Bible. Actually, I think he used this Bible because it's old. <laughs> so yes, you have to check for the account of it. And then the next one is check if there are artifacts. Like, are there statues, artifacts that makes it true that these things really existed? And people have been traveling to Egypt and all that to see the things that happened. And I really want to go there. So yes, number one, the Bible is perfect, it is accurate, there is nothing wrong with it, you have to trust it. The second reason is, it's scientifically accurate. Now let me tell you something, God set the laws of science and made sure that his word does not contradict it. The Bible is scientifically accurate. Science constantly changes, but the Bible has never changed. So why are you comparing science to the word of God? Why? Uh-uh, no. Now, there was this lies that I was hearing, or we were all hearing, but it was never in the Bible because it was a lie. Yeah. The first one was the lie that the world or the earth is a flat surface. Did you hear that? No, I don't, I don't think it was. Now, the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22 says that the Lord sits on the throne, I think so. The world is around... It is like this. Like this is not loud. Something like this. The world is like this. And you can find it in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22. And then the, another line was that 
the Egyptians believed that there was a giant called Atlas that holds the earth. Wait a minute. Moses was there now. He didn't even tell us that, or it was it recorded in the Bible that there was a, a giant called Atlas holding the earth. Please, no. Job chapter 26 verse 7 will tell you in my Bible that God stretched out the northern sky, the sky and hung the earth in an empty space. Empty space. There is no giant anywhere. So yeah, that was also a lie and that couldn't be recorded in the Bible. And the last one was people were counting their stars and they said it was between 121 and 126. This one I'm not going to talk. Please, this evening, count the stars and check for yourself. How many stars do we have? That was also a lie. So the third point is the Bible is prophetically accurate. Prophetically accurate. Do you know that prophecies has been said about these Bibles or whatsoever that is going to happen? There were 300 prophecies about that was told about Jesus Christ 10,000 years ago before he was even born. Now, do you know when Jesus was dead and they were crucifying him or he was dying and he was on the cross and he was saying, God, why have you forsaken me and all that? David even said the same thing. Let me prove it. Psalm 22 verse 1 to 6 that will give you an account of what David actually said almost the same as what Jesus said when he was on the cross what? that is real man not only that and then God directed his prophecies 2 Peter 1 verse 21 let me see if I can check it out 2 Peter by 1 verse 21 says that for no prophetic message ever came just from human will, but people were under the control of the Holy Spirit as they spoke the message that came from God. That means this Bible really, really, it just comes from God. I'm, I'm being impacted to talk about Second Timothy, but I'll go back very soon. And then the fourth reason why you should trust this Bible Sorry about that. <laughs> it's because the Bible is them thematically unified. That means there is a theme with it. There is it's synchronized. There is something. You can check the dictionary, I guess. Now, do you know that about 66 chapters are in the Bible? Yeah, some of you don't know. Now, there are 40 different authors in the Bible. And they wrote this Bible in three different continents. Three different continents with three different languages about 10,000 years ago but yet when they brought all of it together it made sense what kind of God are we serving? the Bible is just thematically unified there is nothing you can do about it now, none of them knew themselves none of those authors knew themselves yet they were able to write it it was written after Jesus' death they were able to write the account of everything they brought it together for you and I to use to be saved. Now even Jesus said something in John chapter 5 verse 39. Let me see if I'll find it for you. John 5, yeah. Verse 39. He said, and I read, You study the scriptures because you think that in them you will find internal life. And these very scriptures speak about me. That means whatever has happened before, you know, it's all about Jesus. The scriptures, and they are in the Bible, and we are using it, and you are telling me you don't trust it. I'm giving you the fifth reason why you should trust the Bible. And the next, the next reason is, the Bible has survived many attacks. Many attacks, like you literally hear people Bibles being burnt, Christians dying, so many things are happening to people just because of the Bible. It has survived it. It's just an a usual book that we use, but it has been the most despised book, the most banned book, the most destroyed book, the most annoyed. Oh, and it's still being read. We still read the Bible. No matter what they do to the Bible, we are still going to read the Bible. Because we believe in the power that it carries. 
of this Bible is still the most read book, the most published, and the most sung book. How many books do you have that you can sing from? Not my Bible. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, verse 24 to 25, that the word of God shall stand forever. Yeah. And my last reason why you should trust the Bible is because the Bible has the transforming power of God. It is only the Bible that you can read and your life will never be the same if you believe it. I don't know about Romeo and Juliet's Bible also and I don't know about um, think like a man and like a lady. But the Bible is the only book that you can read, believe it and it's definitely going to work for you. And these are the six reasons why you should love, trust, adore the Bible. Thank you so much for listening. And my quotation for you it is Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, which says, Let the word of God dwell richly in your life. Let the word of God dwell richly in your life. all these reasons I have given you from today trust the Bible that you are using and don't forget that 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 to 17 says that all scriptures all scriptures are God's breath and it is used for teaching, for correction for training in righteousness so that man may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work God loves us. That is how come he was able to gather all these things for us to read and then be transformed by the renewal of our minds through reading the word of God. I can't wait to start the journey of learning a lot from you, how to be rich, how to enjoy life with Christ. Thank you so much for listening and for watching. I'm sure you had an amazing time just as I enjoyed my researching. Thanks so much, Reverend Pepe, who see my stuff for their sisters. God bless you. And God bless you, my subscribers. Let's meet on Friday for the The Bible is historically accurate, scientifically accurate, it is prophetically accurate, thematically unified, has survived all attacks and has the transforming power of God. Thank you so much if you enjoyed watching and listening to me. I say God bless you and I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to be able to understand the kind of book that we have so that we can be able to have a quiet time with God and to understand whatever it says. I'm thinking of doing a video about how to read the Bible very soon. So thank you so much and please don't forget to subscribe, to comment, to share, to like it. I'm so grateful for your time. God bless you. See you on Friday.